All right, sorry for the delay. Uh, thanks everybody for joining. And I think you, hopefully you can see uh, the window that I'm sharing and then I'll post it on the chat as well. Uh, appreciate people helping with the note taking. Um, so uh, got a few of the topics for today. I, I think a bulk of the time we'll probably spend on, on David leaving the discussion on community advisory council. Uh, I think we, I think David, you shared an MR links with the core team members uh, a week or two ago when you started. Uh, got some initial feedback from a few people. Uh, that I think there are a few outstanding items that uh, that we want to talk about. Uh, then I'll uh, get quick updates on Contribute 2020 um, and wider community members and, and the hackathon we just concluded last week. Uh, and obviously we'll have time at the end. Uh, if you have time, like we can talk about other topics as well. So feel free to add them to the Google Doc if you have other topics you want to cover. Uh, without further ado, I guess I'll uh, turn things over to you, David, and um, can go from there. All right, thanks, Ray. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, I think most of you know about uh, about this uh, this proposal. Some of you have uh, commented already there, so thanks for for the initial review and for the and for the comments. Um, just for starters, um, I want to. Uh, to perhaps emphasize the purpose of the of the uh, of this um, new body or this proposal for this new body, uh, I'm just going to read the, the purpose as I as I put it in uh, in there. Um, but the idea is that the community advisory council is a consultative body and it represents the views of the wider community, and then helps GitLab as a company hold true to its values and open source stewardship promises. Um, the idea is that it is a key part of the review process to provide independent early input and guidance on significant changes that affect the GitLab user experience in terms of service. Um, in other words, um, we want to make sure um, our um, wider community is uh, well aware of changes that, uh, that are significant enough that, uh, that can, can affect that, uh, that user experience. And then uh, we want to make sure that we factor in that, uh, that feedback and that helps us guide, uh, guide the decisions. Um, for the details, uh, you'll see the, um, the handbook MR link in there. Um, if there's also a link uh, for the, uh, on the review app uh, output for easier reading. Um, before we start on, the, uh, on the, some of the upcoming discussion items, um, I'd like to gather perhaps uh, an idea of um, at least on the round here today, um, if you think this is a good idea, um, if this is a step in the right direction, or if you do some, propose something completely different. So the open question is, uh, yeah, um, how do you feel about this proposal in general? Yeah, um, so I think it's a step in the right direction uh, because as GitLab grows, uh, the core team, loan is far too small uh, to get an accurate uh, view of uh, of the wider community i guess so if you have a larger community uh, advisory council uh, where, that you can consult uh, on topics that you think might be problematic um, i think it could improve uh, how GitLab makes decisions but to um, to have an uh, to have a good effect, this should be a larger group of people and not just like five people or something like that. Thanks, Hannes. Um, our thoughts. And I mean, I, I think this is, I mean, not, not a question or feedback, but I think, David, you have some experience with this too from other communities, right? Uh, particularly at, at Ubuntu, right? And I think you have some experiences there where, I mean, things that work well and challenges. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was a bit, um, I mean, part of the, um, yeah, sorry, I was just checking if I was unmuted. Um, 
so we had uh, a similar um, community structure at, uh, at Ubuntu called the Ubuntu Community Council, which still exists, by the way. Um, it was uh, a bit different than the, this advisory council, uh, in the sense that it has a it had a, a, a wider uh, charter um, because it had uh, it essentially uh, oversaw all of the other councils in the uh, in the Ubuntu community. Um, however, the part that overlaps with this proposal is that uh, the fact that the, uh, the community council there was uh, was a stakeholder uh, on decisions that affected the, the Ubuntu community at, uh, at all as a whole, and uh, it was uh, it was very uh, very useful to have uh, that uh, first of all sounding board um, for early reviews of proposals, but also um, they tended to have uh, really constructive opinions. In the sense that uh, that sometimes then uh, made us think whether we should go in a completely different direction or we should tweak some of those uh, of those uh, decisions. So to that extent, it uh, it worked well. It was a small group; it was uh, less than ten than ten people, and they tended to uh, to meet regularly to discuss uh, topics uh, um, essentially proposed by Nonical, the, the company behind Ubuntu. But also topics um, that had to do with uh, with anything related to, to the community. Um, it could be topics proposed by the council them, uh, themselves, or uh, topics nominated by the uh, by the wider community. Um, for the uh, CAC, um, I would like to start with a smaller uh, charter, or that would be the, the proposal, whereby it is mostly about reviewing, about providing this uh, this early feedback and. Uh, and guidance. Um, I mean, to that extent, there will still be regular regular meetings, um, and perhaps something that's not yet on the on the MR and something that John Coughlin from from our from the our team from the community relations team proposed was to have a nomination process. But it's not just members of the council uh, and members of the GitLab team that can propose uh, topics. And I think that would perhaps go in line with uh, with Hannes' uh, thought that um, it should be. A, uh, it's not scalable to have a smaller a smaller group to just um, uh, oversee what uh, what discussions uh, need uh, need attention. Um, in terms of the size of the council, and perhaps to go through some of the of the points uh, of the outstanding points in the discussion, um, the initial idea was to uh, was to add the whole of the of the core team. Um, because um, I mean, you uh, you all have a track record and history of, uh, of working on the on the project. You all know uh, the project uh, and uh, GitLab team as well very well. Um, and and I mean, I particularly still be far, uh, favorable of doing this. I'm just concerned about uh, spreading uh, yourselves too too thin. Um, but uh, perhaps this is a decision that uh, we should put to the core team members themselves, whether they want to join as a whole or whether some of them want to join the, the council or not. In any case, to summarize, I think uh, even though that we have those categories um, to um, for eligibility to join the council, uh, and even though that we put a limit to that, uh, I would say perhaps um, a good starter would be to invite the, the whole of the core team, uh, the people that want to join, of course, uh, to the to the to the council as well, and perhaps to for that to be the initial seed. Um, however, um, I think we need to have a bigger representation uh, as well, and uh, one, uh, some of the people that we're reaching out to will be the, um, the open source. Um, uh, partners that, uh, that we have, and with partners, I mean larger projects such as Drupal, GNOME, Devin, and so on, and uh, heroes, and then also customers. Um, I would perhaps still uh, add a note on the on the initial size uh, of this to have uh, to have a goal, but I agree that uh, that we might want to aim for a. Uh, for a bigger size, um, that's the part that I'm, I'm, what I'm not too uh, too sure about. But perhaps to address Hannes' uh, concern, um, rather than establishing maximum, then perhaps we could establish a, a minimum only on the on the MR. Hannes, what do you think on this one? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's better. 
because I'm not sure if we should have a maximum uh, number of people there. So if you send invites to, let's say, a few, a few big open source partners plus a few customers, you probably already have like 15 to 20 people if everybody accepts, which probably won't happen, but you're, you're already over the maximum number that's currently uh, defined in the proposal. So yeah. I would simply remove the maximum number. Okay, cool. And then, I mean, the other, uh, the other thought that I have as well is in terms of um, proportionality of uh, each one of the groups being, being, uh, being well represented. Um, right now, there's, um, to recap, there's six, uh, there are six groups for eligibility. I'm just going to read them from the, from the MR. Uh, the GitLab core team, GitLab heroes, open source program partners, uh, GitLab for members with trust level uh, three or four, uh, GitLab customers, and then GitLab team members with the background on working with the, with the wider community. Um, I wonder, um, to make sure that all of the groups are well, well represented, I wonder if we should add a note on um, proportionality as in there should be like more than, I don't know, um, uh, 20% or 15% of uh, each one of those uh, of those groups. Um, that's one thought that I had, uh, just to make sure that the, 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 the council is diverse, but perhaps this is a, um, well, perhaps this should uh, not be a concern at least at, uh, at lunch, I don't know. I think that only makes sense for a part of the groups. For example, I, I don't think the core team should make up the majority of the council simply because uh, you're already fulfilling another role. And uh, if you only have the same people on both groups, uh, you're not getting different opinions. Um, so I guess I would somewhat limit the percentage from the core team and the percentage from uh, GitLab employees. But I wouldn't limit the percentage of uh, open source partners and uh, customers, just my opinion. That just, they just uh, should be around the same percentage. So not 90% customers and 10% open source partners. Or something like That makes sense to me also. To have a balance between the open source uh, partners and the customers, at least. That's a good idea. I mean, the other thing, this, this is probably further down the road. Uh, I don't think this is something we're going to have to like worry about initially. Um, but ultimately, I'm um, thinking like a couple of years down the road, I think it'd be nice if we get to a point where all of these people are elected to the council uh, by the community members. Because I, for as we get started, we, we need to like form this group and and then we'll just have to like nominate people. Um, and it won't be a completely uh, like a, a quote unquote free election. Uh, but hopefully at some point, like all these people will be done through nominations and elections. And I, if I remember correctly, I think that's how Ubuntu Community Council is done these days. But um, I think ultimately that's, there'll be a nice goal to have. Uh, we don't need to figure that out right now, but maybe in the MR we want to state our aspiration that the, all the members in the future uh, should be elected they were like nominated and elected by the community members but I don't know what other people think about that uh, yeah I think that's a that's a nice goal yeah I agree David, did I just make that up about the Ubuntu Council? Or is that accurate? Like, is it all elected? Like, oops. 
we seem to have lost David. Maybe he didn't like my suggestion. <laughs> You back, David? David, are you back? I'm back. Sorry about that. Oh, I had no. uh, troubles with, with Zoom. No, no, no worries. So, yeah, I mean, I just like uh, wrote down a note, but I, so the Ubuntu Council, is it corrected? Is it all like elected? people that go on, yes. on the council today okay yeah exactly yeah uh, it's a one it's a one year term it's all elected um um but i think for the initial incarnation of the of the um of the council i would perhaps uh do it by uh, direct invitation yeah uh, yeah get started right. and then right. the council then can decide uh, how they want to proceed with uh uh, on the next term with uh, nominations or um yeah or again a direct invite yeah yeah i mean i think that we're i think that's i think a couple of us were uh agreeing to that i i think in the mr we just need to state that that's a like an ultimate goal uh, of the council like in the future we won't have a completely freely nominated and elected membership uh, but obviously it, 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 in the beginning we'll it'll be done through like a direct nomination process but yeah i think that's already let me just double check i think that's already on the uh, on the okay. mr uh it could be made more uh okay more obvious, i could have i could have missed it so but if i did then um i think the uh, the only thing that i that i missed perhaps was uh the uh, uh hans was commenting on the uh uh on the composition of the of the council, when I was saying that uh, perhaps one thing that might be worth looking at would be proportionality, mm -hmm. um, but that's when I got uh, cut off. I'm not sure if that's captured in the notes. Uh, yeah, basically I said uh, I would only limit uh, the amount of uh, GitLab employees and core team members because you already have co uh, the core team and can get an opinion from the core team members. Uh, so if you only add the core team members to the uh, community advisory council, you won't get any new opinions. Um, and that the majority should be open source partners and uh, customers with about the same percentage. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and let me have a thought about, uh, about this, how to uh how to formulate um i think the, the final composition might actually change um perhaps we might have more or less back uh, or less packets um but yeah i think i think the challenge here will be to to find the initial seed of uh of um of individuals that uh, that want to participate or to participate in there um so i think also um this MR uh, will evolve as the first uh, as the first people join joining as well. Uh, so perhaps I shouldn't put that much thought on uh, on uh, on size. All than yeah, I think I think the minimum does make sense though, um, because we have to uh, to make sure that there's enough people to to have um, a good overview. Um, and then uh, I think perhaps to. Uh, to quickly go through the uh, uh, to the topics um, that uh, should be eligible for a council review, um, I started with an initial uh, with initial list. I think this is not um, um, an exhaustive an exhaustive list. Uh, it's rather um, rather a start. Um, but I just wanted to to check uh, whether you think it makes sense. Um, the idea being that uh, the council. Uh, should be consulted uh, or could be consulted uh, for any topics that have to do with updates to the GitLab terms of service. Um, tele the telemetry issue uh, would fall into that uh, category. Uh, plans affecting uh, user privacy. Um, 
yeah, uh, that um, that would also apply to uh, to that one too. Um, then controversial decisions on tier placement, free versus paid only on of specific features. Um, the idea behind that one is um, quite often whenever we have a, a large open source projects migrating, and whenever they use a GitLab C, then there are a few features that they would like to be to have ported um, to the to the uh, to CE, and. Um, while well, we try to be flexible and we'll, while we try to make sure that uh, those decisions are not only driven by the immigration but also by um, by our um, stewardship uh, process um, it is or it would help with the discussion if there was um, a third um, independent party that uh, that uh, wasn't GitLab to advise on those on those decisions um, because it is um, it is sometimes challenging to strike a balance between um, we wanted to support open source and then um, moving out to uh, features that uh, that might uh, generate revenue for customers to um, to the to the free tier essentially. And then finally, uh, general GitLab policy changes that affect wider community members. That's uh, essentially casting a wider a wider net. That um, anything that has to do with uh, with the way people use uh, GitLab, then um, uh, it's also eligible for discussion. Any thoughts on those? Any categories that you think um, might be might be missing? With the understanding that this uh, is something that can can grow as uh, as the as the council forms. I'm not sure what categories, but I think we. Also, need a way to uh, allow the community to propose or argue and please to propose uh, topics for uh, the CIC. So, I don't know, even if it's something simple like a form on the, on the site where you can uh, add a link to the, to the issue and a short description why you think this should be relevant for the CIC that they receive. Something like that. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I'm just taking notes. Um, I think that goes in line with what John uh, was mentioning in the MRS uh, as well, and I, I tend to, I tend to agree. Uh, there's something that I can add straight away. Um, um, yeah, either a form or issue or uh, or a template. Um, Or if we're using if we're using some sort of a formal as a communication channel, which is the next topic, I mean the forum could be another possibility too, where just people get on the forum and propose topics. Cool. All right. So um, uh, to summarize, it seems that there are no concerns with the existing list of uh, of topics. But we do want to uh, to be able for the wider community to be able to to propose topics, and that's something that I that I can add to the to the MR. Cool, thanks. Um, and then finally, um, the um, uh, in terms of uh, of the communication channels, I think there needs to be a way for the council to uh, to have discussions, um, even if they are um, outside of uh, a particular topic that's being proposed. Um, there are um, there could be different ways. Um, one could be GitLab, uh, GitLab itself. Um, and I wonder if uh, we need either private or public uh, public project for for that, or if it's private, then something like Service Desk, or whether we need a dedicated uh, channel that's outside of uh, of, uh, of GitLab. Um, um, just going through some of the uh, some of the ideas uh, in there, and I'm just scrolling down the um, TMR. Um, yeah, I proposed the uh, uh, the form as well, um, and uh, Hannes is proposing also a Gitter a Gitter channel or public this uh, uh, Slack instance or this uh, Discord. Um, I think I would uh, agree with, uh, with most of them. I would. Perhaps say um, Slack instance 
I would rather see Gitter being used um, because then we'd be using uh, existing infrastructure. Um, and then uh, um, yeah, and then uh, I think for Slack, perhaps it's something for the next topic on a uh, on uh, on on a core team. Um, I'd like to consider at some point seeing how we could have uh, ways of having our private instance of Slack uh, being more public. But that's topic for uh, for another for another conversation. But yeah, I think that the 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 main question is uh, whether we think GitLab would be enough as a communication channel, or whether we need something dedicated uh, for the for the team to have uh, to have conversations that are outside of uh, of the topics being discussed. Um, I think it would make sense. But I'd like to uh, to gather your your opinions on this. I mean, I my preference, uh, if we're trying to involve more people in the community that are less technical, I think something like a forum would be more user friendly, and it, it'll be easier to kind of group discussions, which is not easy to do with like Slack or Gitter. Um, but I mean, that's my my opinion, and also I think it's a better option than using the GitLab um, as a as a communication channel, it's, it, I think it's a little, um, I don't think it's like very natural for a lot of people. Um, but I mean, that's my thought, but I, I don't know if people have different op opinions. <laughs> I, I think using a separate GitLab project can be, can work, depends on, uh, how often the the council meets and how how many topics there are to discuss. Um, so the benefit of using GitLab project would be that probably most of the people already have a GitLab account uh, that are on the council, so they know how to use it. And uh, I think if if they need a more dynamic. Uh, Conversation method as well. They can use, uh, for example, a guitar. Uh, I think most of the discussions should be public in this uh, in the CAC. If there is a need for a private discussion at some point, they can with GitLab. They can just use a private issue for the time being. Uh, you already have the possibility of that. Yeah, I agree with Hans. I mean. Uh, I think forum is easier probably for newcomers, but if we if we can end up using a GitLab, might be better because everybody has GitLab already, and if they want to contribute to it, they have to uh, they need to have an account anyways, and maybe they can even use more GitLab and you know, but that's just, just my, my idea. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks everyone for, for your input. Um, what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll make this uh, this proposal perhaps more more concrete in, uh, in there, and then uh, we'll have it uh, I'll have it ready for a final uh, for a final review. Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of communication channels, I think it's okay to have, I mean, I don't want to have like four different tools that people use and that it, that'll get really confusing. But if it's just like two, um uh then i think it would be okay i mean it's like using gitlab uh issues or epics to uh uh track a lot of discussion i think is fine uh and then you know we can supplement that with the like a slack or something that's easier for like a quicker conversation um but i i think that's workable um but yeah but I think we should definitely avoid having like four tools that we're using. But... Yeah, I think I like that. I mean, I think the thought that is forming from this conversation is that uh, we need one for more, um, um, one tool for more dynamic converse conversation. And this could be used also for, uh, for meetings uh, in remote whenever we cannot use cameras, for instance, or voice. 
and that could be Kitter, and then uh, then perhaps a dedicated project at uh, at GitLab. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so I think these were all of the points that uh, that I had myself on uh, on that one, and uh, from uh, what I gather uh, from the from the feedback is that uh, the general desk consensus that this step in the right direction is something that uh, we should try. We should see how it uh, works, um, and then um, with this, I'll uh, make sure to factor in the feedback from today's meeting as well on the on the MR. Right. Thanks, David. All right. I guess we can move on to next couple of quick updates. If I can, yeah, it's progress the slides. Uh, so we had a quick discussion on this, uh, I think, last month. And then I think there were some Slack conversations. Uh, I shared a Google Doc uh, with uh, that list, uh, list people that uh, there we're reaching out to uh, in terms of invitations. So I, I sent the, the first wave out to uh, eight individuals last week. I mean, they're a combination of like a proofreaders and code contributors. And uh, I was pleasantly surprised. I mean, like for New Orleans, it, it took a long time to get like a two people to attend, but out of the eight, like four people, I mean, accepted the invitation, which I'm very excited about. I mean, two have declined. Uh, due to scheduling issues, like two I'm still trying to follow up on. Uh, but we'll be reaching out to other people, like particularly the heroes, uh, that's sort of the next wave. Uh, so that's sort of where things are. Uh, and I assume for all the core team members that are uh, not GitLab uh, team members, I, I assume you got like invitations to register. That's That was my impression. Um, but let me know if you have any questions with registration or booking travels and all that. But Hopefully, uh, we can see most of you in Prague. But that's sort of where things are. Uh, but if, if you want to find out who we reach out to, like I don't have the Google, uh, Google Doc handy. I'll post it on the chat window when I find it. But you can uh, track the status on the tracking sheet. I think there are about 20 or 30 people listed there, the people that we're trying to uh, reach out to, including the core team members. Okay, and uh, update on the hackathon that concluded, or that happened last week. Um, so we had another record uh, hackathon in terms of number of MRs that came in. Uh, was uh, uh, ob yeah, obviously pretty excited and happy uh, about all the contributions. A lot of core team members, you, you helped out as well in, in, in addition to participating. Uh, so definitely appreciate that. And, and Vinny's not on the call. Uh, and I think David, you posted this on one of the Slack channels too. I mean, this was this epic that uh, Vinny opened during the hackathon was just a gold mine. Um, I I think I was doing a count of how many how many MRs were open as a result of this epic. It was like twenty nine or thirty. Um, so I mean, big thanks to Vinny for for opening a. Uh, potential gold mine for contributions, and he's been really good about like reviewing this as well. I mean, this is like a few days leading up to the release date, and uh, so this was uh, uh, this was pretty awesome. And we talked about in the Slack about uh, creating a like a similar template for uh, so that people can work on like bite-sized issues. I mean, I, I think it made really easy for a lot of people to to just jump on the jump on these like issues that that was part of the epic. Um, so, I mean, any re regular maintenance items or tasks that, that we can create similar epics for, uh, I don't know if, like, uh, if you guys can think of any uh, on the spot, but if you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear them. I think we can create a, uh, use this as a good template, and I'll probably reach out to some of the other um, engineers and engineering managers as well, but I uh, work really well. I think I went for, like, a uh, quick run uh, during the day one of the hackathon and when I came back my inbox just basically exploded with like MRs that came in um, so it was pretty cool but just wanted to share that in case you didn't notice it 
Uh, well, thanks, Hannes, for posting the spreadsheet. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I thought it was, uh, it was awesome. It was, uh, it was, uh, I was just watching the uh, MRs coming in on the hackathon, and uh, I was realizing oh, these all look similar. And then I realized that uh, that we had uh, had created that one. Um, so I wonder if there's something that we could um, uh, perhaps standardize on, not just before uh, the hackathon, but perhaps even before. Uh, well, when we do the kickoff, uh, the monthly kickoff. Um, I think Ray, your your idea of having a template, um, yeah. and perhaps uh, then adding that to the to the handbook, and reaching out to engineering managers and, uh, and product managers and, and engineers. Uh, during the kickoff, uh, or perhaps making sure that that's on the agenda, might be uh, might be something that would really help us. Uh, again, not just on hackathons, but like uh, on every release cycle. Yeah, I mean, th this is something I'll probably talk about uh, in the future core team meetings. But one of the things that uh, I mean, David and I talked about was creating like a hackathon in a box sort of package. So anybody who organizes a meetup can just do a, a mini hackathon on their own, like face to face when they're doing a meetup, like in Cape Town or uh, wherever the meetup's taking place. And if we have a lot of these like a templates that people could just grab, uh, I think it'll be very handy. Uh, and then, like David said, we don't have to wait until the hackathon to create these things. It's, this could all just be available, just waiting for contributors to uh, to grab. Um, so, yeah, if you have any suggestions or or ideas, I mean, feel free to let let me or David know. But yeah, I, I thought this worked out worked out really well. So. Cool. All right. So. That's it for the hackathon. Uh, any other topics uh, that people want to cover? Uh, if there's anything else, uh, I guess we can just wrap up the call and we'll meet again in about uh, it'll be three weeks. It'll be second Wednesday in December. So, cool. Cool. All right. Well, thanks everybody for your time. Have a have a good day or or good evening. Right. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.